Behind Every Great Man is certainly a really interesting Cheers episode, particularly with Diane. This is the 19th episode of the third season of Cheers, directed, of course, by the wonderful James Burrows. And there will be spoilers from now as I go through the episode, mostly chronologically, and talk about things that I think are particularly interesting, things that I like. And I'll say straight away, loved the intro. The intro where they're getting a new keg and it basically turns into this ceremony and all of the patrons are holding up their beers to welcome in this new keg. Honestly, I don't drink, but I still felt the love in that moment and it was just a really fun way to start the episode. Then we learn that, unfortunately, this is the second episode in a row without Nicholas Colasanto. Again, I am assuming this was because of his ill health within the context of the episode. He's in Ohio. They managed to get some comedy out of it, but it does make me wonder what comedy Coach would have brought because, obviously, Coach is a fantastically funny character. There is actually a script currently on eBay of this episode, and I'm part of me is tempted to buy it to see what his lines would have been, but at the same time, I don't know if it's the finished script, the revised script without Coach, so I'm probably not going to buy it, but if anybody does get hold of the script or any script of this episode that might have been written with Coach in it, I'd love to know what it would have looked like. Obviously, not great that he's not in it, but as I said, they managed to get some comedy out of Coach's role in this. But then the main narrative kicks in, and a reporter called Paula Nelson comes into Cheers. She's doing an article about the Boston single scene, and after talking to Cliff and Norm, Carla suggests that she talks to Sam. And she does this, and initially she's not interested in Sam, but then Sam says something that's relatively interesting, and they end up going up to Melville's, and Sam realises that he wants this woman. And it just so happens that the thing he'd said to her was something Diane had said previously. So he starts to say a lot of, in his words, Dianeisms to try and attract her, and things take a very interesting turn. Diane thinks that Sam is taking an interest in the arts all of a sudden because of her. There's a really interesting thing that I, I find to be quite bizarre. Diane is talking to Sam about Cezanne and he's writing down notes on the bar in pencil, on the wooden bar top in pencil. I don't know why this irritated me so much, but there is no way that that pencil is making marks in the bar that are legible afterwards. I don't know why they didn't just have him writing on a napkin or something. It was it, it was very strange. And then a little bit later, Fraser comes into the bar. This is the first time Fraser's been in it in, I think, a good few episodes. So it was nice to see him back. There's actually a bit of tension between Fraser and Diane here. And Fraser is convinced that Sam is taking an interest in the arts to win Diane back. And he plants that seed in Diane's brain. And then Diane overhears a conversation Sam is having where he's actually talking about Paula, but she thinks he's talking about her. And then she overhears a phone conversation where he's booking a resort for him and Paula. And again, she thinks it's for her. And that, that in itself is fascinating enough that she thinks Sam still is interested in her. But what's more interesting is that she seems really keen and she's very interested in the idea of exploring her romantic relationship with Sam again. Now, considering she's dating Fraser, that leaves us in an awkward situation because she's genuinely considering spending time romantically with Sam. And it's a little bit uneasy in a way that's entertaining, of course. But the most entertaining scene in the whole episode, um, well, first of all, absolutely loved it when we had our second Norm entrance. We got two Norms in this episode and everybody went Norm and it was amazing. And then Cliff walked in and said afternoon and silence. Really thoroughly enjoyed it. The conversations about the hungry heifer and Beth and Loopster, as they call it, really thoroughly enjoyed that. Great scene. But my other favourite scene is when Paula and Diane both walk into the bar with their suitcases, obviously ready to meet Sam. And at this point, Diane still doesn't know that Sam wasn't talking about her. He tried to ask her to look after the bar while he was away, and she thought he was asking her to go away with her 
because obviously she'd overheard the booking for the reservation and they both Paul and Diane both turn up at the bar and the penny doesn't drop immediately also Diane's outfit absolutely love it just as an aside and I think the exchange between the two of them was was pretty interesting and interesting to see how Diane responded to that so a really great episode but definitely a very thought-provoking one with regard to where Diane's head currently is and and her relationship with Sam and how she potentially still feels about him versus how she feels about Fraser. So definitely paving the way for some interesting episodes to come and ultimately a really thoroughly enjoyable episode. I miss Coach. I wish he was in this episode, but still otherwise a really brilliant episode. <laughs> 